Hello and welcome to Home Tech Adventure. Would you like to use Clonezilla to create an image of your hard drive, including all the system, all the programs, and all the data on your hard drive for backup purposes? We're going to do that today. To create a backup image, you're first going to need the Clonezilla USB. There's another video linked in the description on how to do that. We're going to use the one that we created in that video. You're also going to need a drive to put the image on. It should be a pretty large hard drive because it's got to back up all of your data. You can use a hard drive or SSD for backup purposes. I got two examples here. This is the drive that we're actually going to use. It's a Seagate external hard drive. Not my favorite, but hey, it works for backup purposes. It's three gigabyte, it's very large. Uh, three terabyte, oh, sorry, not gigabyte, three terabyte. It has a USB 3 connection. What I really prefer, and I would use this, but I have this other one available. Um, this is another backup drive I use for different purposes, but this one I like better because it actually has a drive in it that can be easily accessed and replaced if necessary. If I need to replace place the one in the Seagate, I probably have to just throw this away because breaking apart this plastic shell, I'll probably break everything and won't be recoverable. Where this one, it's just a couple of screws that normally hold it in that I've removed. The other nice thing about this one is it actually has a switch on the back side. The, the Seagate one does not have a switch which makes it very difficult to use sometimes because it turns on immediately when you plug the darn thing in. You can also use an SSD and I recommend putting the SSD in a case as we did with the previous video linked in the description on making an exact clone with the exact same drive. You should be using USB 3 or USB-C or Thunderbolt connections for your backup drive. USB 2 is just too slow. Unless that's the only thing that your computer has, USB 3 is the choice, or something better, USB-C or a Thunderbolt connection. You can also back up to a network drive. It should be similar to this, but we're not gonna cover the details in this video. Let me attach this drive to the computer and go into the computer and let's show you how to prepare the, the hard drive for the backup. I've now connected the drive and let's see what we have on this particular drive for backup purposes. I'm going to go into disk management. I left this drive this way because I want to show you a worst case scenario. This drive was previously formatted with various partitions and one of the partitions was actually used for a time machine backup for a Mac computer. Because of that, we can't totally get rid of everything on the drive. If you notice, I click on this, I can't get rid of that partition. Now I can get rid of this partition, I can format it, I can delete the volume. Volume is another name for a partition. Disk is a drive. I can't get rid of this one or this one. And I want to get rid of all of them. I want to have just a blank drive and then we'll partition it. So what we have to do, since we can't get rid of all those by the disk management tool, I'm going to go into the command prompt. Just type in a CMD and don't hit enter yet. You want to right click on the command prompt and run as administrator. Click yes. And we're going to use a utility called disk part, D-I-S-K-P-A-R-T, and just hit enter and it should start disk part. It did. Okay, so now we need a list of the disk, list disk, and it lists our disk. And clearly the backup one is the big one, the second one, it's called disk one on the list there. We want to select disk one because we want to work with disk one and we want to clean it. Disk one is now selected. Let's double check that first. List disk again. And sure enough, you can see over here it has an asterisk next to disk one, which means that is selected. It's very important that you select the correct disk. Not responsible if you pick the wrong disk and do the clean operation and ruin your whole system. Anyway, this is disk one, so we can just type clean and it will clean disk one. That's all we got to do in the command prompt. Let's close that. Let's go back into the disk management. There it is. I just typed in disk MA and it came up on the Windows 10 system. I'll just click there 
and now it tells us we have to format the disk. We cleaned it, we cleaned it. All the partitions just got totally erased and we started from scratch. So let's create several partitions on this drive. It's three terabytes. And currently this computer only has a 250 gigabyte drive. So I don't need the full three terabytes for a backup. So let's partition it for backup with three different systems. And I'll show you a little trick in the process. So we're gonna take the guide partition. You really should be using guide partition now unless you have an extremely old system. Guide partition is, is the more modern way to do that. So we'll click OK. Now that we have a drive that's partitioned with the guide partition and it's all blank, we could just format it and be done with it and then just back up to that drive. But it's kind of nice to have separate backup drives for separate computers. And this being a three terabyte drive can back up several computers with reasonably sized hard drives. The hard drive that's installed in this system that I'm working on is a 240 gigabyte uh, SSD actually. And we're gonna back up using an image so we won't even need all the 240 gigabytes. So we could make this a pretty small drive. But what I'm gonna do is allow for multiple backups, multiple generations, so and some extra stuff I'm gonna show you at the end. Let's make a 700 gigabyte partition for backing up this 240 gigabyte drive. It's about three times the size of the drive. That's plenty for multiple backups, multiple generations, so that we can go back, if we have to, to the previous, previous, previous backup in case of you know, some catastrophic failure or something like that. So let's partition it first with a 700 gigabyte uh, partition. So I right click on this and choose new simple volume. Volume is another name for partition. I click next. Now, if you notice, we have 2 million megabytes. It's very confusing that they do this in megabytes on Windows. We normally talk in gigabytes or terabytes nowadays. Just remember there's a thousand, roughly, a thousand, mega, a thousand megabytes in a gigabyte and a thousand gigabytes in a terabyte. So if we were gonna do a terabyte, we'd need a thousand thousand or a million bytes, megabytes. We're gonna do 700, 700 gigabytes so we need 700,000 megabytes. So let's put that in. 700,000, <laughs> did I get enough zeros on there? I think I did. Okay, so we click next and assign the drive letter. You can assign this anything you want. I, I'm gonna use L, M, and N because, uh, whatever, they go in order. So L, M, and N is what I'm gonna do. We're gonna have three partitions on this drive. So click L. And NTFS, you could leave it NTFS. If you're gonna only use this backup drive, for Windows operating systems, NTFS works great. But I wanna use this for other operating systems, including a Mac. And so I'm going to use XFAT. XFAT works just fine. It's also extremely universal. It can be used for backing up the Mac or the Windows PC. So I like to use XFAT because it's, it's more universal. Now, volume label, uh, you're only allowed 11 letters on this. So let's go, uh, this is my test PC. So we'll go test, <laughs> test PC and backup. Okay, so that's my test PC backup. Now, it, you don't have to use all caps here, um, but it's kind of a good idea because it's case insensitive on Windows, but it's case sensitive on Mac. And so it's kind of nice to remind yourself when you're on the Mac that it's case insensitive and to use all caps just to make sure um, you, you get the same thing. So you click next here and you click finish. And there we go, we got a 700 gigabyte drive. By the way, these are not to scale. You notice they look the same size, but if you look at the details, this one's a lot smaller than this one. Okay, now let's make a drive to back up the Mac using Time Machine, and then we'll use one to back up my editing computer. How about that? Um, let's do the editing computer one first because the other one is a little bit different. Well, I'll show you what, what I mean on that. So we got an XFAT drive there. So let's make up, make a new simple volume and let's make one to back up the editing computer. Now the editing computer is quite a bit bigger hard drive. It's got a 500 gigabyte hard drive. So let's make 1500 gigabytes or 1 1.5 terabytes or 1.5 million megabytes for this thing. So one, five, zero, 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 zero. That's a lot of zeros. I wish they would allow you to change the uh, units here. 
But anyway, we click next and let's, we did L before, let's go M here for the middle drive and click next. And we're gonna do this in XFAT as well. And this one's gonna be my edit PC backup. So edit PC backup, there we go. Okay, so that partition's gonna be for backing up my editing PC and I'm gonna click finish. Now, I'm gonna show you something special with the last partition. We're going to use this to back up the uh, Mac computer that I have. Now, backing up a Mac computer, you can use Time Machine and you can use Clonezilla like we're using here. I'm gonna use Clonezilla actually, but I wanna show you because a lot of you are gonna to wanna to use this for a Time Machine backup because the Time Machine is a very good backup uh, program that's built into the Mac operating system. So I do recommend using that. If you just format the rest of the space with Time Machine, you will not have enough space to create a Time Machine backup because the Time Machine backup needs to create an EFI partition. It needs space to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to make use of all the rest of the space except for 500 megabytes because that 500 megabytes is enough for the Mac operating system to use it as a Time Machine backup drive, even if it's formatted in XFAT. Time Machine will format it in its own format, um, probably an HFS Plus format um, that the Mac uses, it's proprietary to the Mac. That's why when we put this drive in, that one partition wasn't able to be deleted because it was a proprietary Mac format. We're going to format it as XFAT on here, and then if we want to use it as Time Machine, we can reformat it if we leave that 500 megabyte of extra unallocated space on the drive. So let's do that now. So I'm gonna right click here, new simple volume next and this is a lot easier all we have to do is subtract 500 from this and look it ends in 571 so let's just make that 000 that's close enough to 500 so we'll just make it 000 so that got rid of 500 of that um, so click next and drive letter we're going to go n so i got lmn for my drive letters here uh, click next and we're going to create xfat volume and let's call this Mac, oops, I said I'm gonna keep with all uh, Mac backup. There we go. Okay, so I'll click next and click finish. And there we go. And you can see we got about 500 megabytes of extra unallocated space. And you need that space for using this last partition or any of the partitions actually as a backup for the Mac using the Time Machine program. You can use it with Clonezilla. If you want to use just Clonezilla for all these or just do it on a, a Windows PCs only, you can use up all this extra space. And you can just have all drives, uh, either XFAT or you can have them on N NTFS, whatever you choose. But if you want to do it cross-platform, this is the way to do it. So I just wanted to show you how to do that. So now we're set up. We're going to back up our test PC using an image with Clonezilla to this test PC backup. Now I'm going to put in the Clonezilla USB because when we restart, we have to boot from the Clonezilla USB. In this computer, we're going to hold down the F12 key, but you might have F11, F10, F9, F1, F2, the escape key. It depends on your computer. Do some research on how to get to the boot menu for your motherboard or your computer. If you don't know how to do it, you can hold down the delete key, go into the um, BIOS and do a boot override for the USB key. Let me put that in now and I'll show you what happens. When the Clonezilla USB drive is inserted, it comes up with an error message. You can just ignore that. You can just hit cancel and then do a restart and restart in there. The operating system that Clonezilla works on is not readable by Windows. That's why I wanted to try to reformat the disk. But let's just do a restart here and we'll go into the BIOS by hitting the F12 key to get to the boot menu. I'm holding down the F12 key. A wired keyboard is best for this, by the way. A wireless keyboard, you might have to hammer on the F12 key repeatedly, but I can just hold it down. So here is our boot device select. Um, this first one's blank, which is just crazy. That's my standard boot drive. The UE UEFI PMAP, that's gonna be the Clonezilla one. Um, this would be actually the Windows installation, which is just kind of crazy that it doesn't list anything, but strange things happen when you're messing around doing this a lot with the, you know, switching drives and stuff like I've been doing. But anyway, let's click UEFI PMAP, and we're into Clonezilla. We're gonna just choose the default settings, 
And it's going to take a while to boot up here. We'll skip a little bit. All right, we're started now. If you can't start up here after a couple of minutes, you might try doing, it says other modes of things. You might try the safe graphics mode or something like that if you can't get to this point. Hit English, just hit enter. I'm just using the enter on the keyboard. Um, keep the default keyboard layout. Just use the arrow keys if you want to select a different keyboard or a different uh, language for wherever you live. Start Clonezilla is all we're going to do. And we're going to do the device to image this time, which means we're going to clone a hard drive to an image. So we're going to do that. Okay, so use a local device. We're, you can do this from a server. Oh gosh, there's all kinds of things you can do. We're going to go simple, local device. We're going to start with a local device. That's a local hard drive that's in your computer. So click local device and it's going to find that. Um, if you want to use USB device as a clonezilla, please insert USB device in the machine. Now, we already have it connected, all right? The USB hard drive is already connected. It, it was connected previously. So let's click that. Well, that was strange. I actually had to unplug and plug the USB uh, hard drive that I have into the computer for it to get there. Um, update periodically. I just inserted it. All right, so you can see here that it has found the two drives, the Intel uh, SSD that I have in the computer and the GoFlex external drive. It says press Control-C to exit this window, so Control-C, and we're good. They're mounting the local drive and excluding the partitions. So let's wait and I'll come right back when it comes to the next screen. All right, now we have to choose the partition that we want to put the images on. So let me select here. Remember, we made a 700 gigabyte partition, so we should be able to find that pretty quickly here. Right here, this 700 gigabyte partition is the one that we want for that, uh, and it is XFAT, we did do that. So let's click that. Uh, let's see, okay, we just gotta click done. Press enter to continue. It's just going to put it right on the right on the drive without a folder that it goes into. We can put it in a folder later. Okay, beginner mode is fine. So save disk. Save local disk as an image. That's what we want. We don't want to do parts. We're going to save the whole disk. So do that. All right, and now we get to name the image. And this name is, is already very good. It's 2019-11-28. And the 15, um, that's probably the hour. We really don't need the hour on this one. So I'm going to get rid of that. And then we can add to this. Um, so, oops, 285 day. Okay, so I'll get rid of that. I'm just using the arrow keys here to go over. Um, we can put in whatever we want. I think we need to use underscore here. Um, I don't think we can use space. So I just used underscore. Uh, test PC backup. Okay, so that's the backup done on 2019-11-28. That's November 28th of 2019. Test PC backup, just click OK, or um, we should be able to arrow down. We did, click OK. Please do not input a proper, oh, you have to input a containing only alphabet digit. Okay, so I didn't, I didn't quite get a good name there. Um, so let's see, let's see, test. PC backup. Okay, so let's try that. Looks like it's it, it allowed that. So you got to be careful with the naming scheme. And choose the local disk as source. This is the source that you are going to back up from. And this is the one, obviously, this is the only one with any date on it, so that's the only one they have us to select. Just hit enter to select OK. We can skip checking the file system. Now, if you really want to make sure the backup's good, you can interactively check and repair or do the auto one, but we're going to just skip for today. Um, and no, skip checking the saved image. Um, now, nah, let's check the saved image. We'll do that. It'll take a little bit longer if it checks the saved image, but we'll make sure we got a good image there. And then do not encrypt the drive image. No, we don't want to encrypt. You do have the option to encrypt. And then let's choose power or shut down when we're done. And press enter to continue and we are good to go. 
and this is going to take a long time. So I'm going to come back when it's all done doing its stuff. Just don't worry about all the stuff that's on the screen here. Um, just, you know, let it do its thing. Oh, we got to make sure that we want to do this. Yes, we want to do that backup. Um, we're going to back up all of those things. Okay. Um, to home part image test backup. That's just fine. So we can do that. And we might have to choose yes again. No, we don't. So it's doing the backup image. So I'll come back when the backup image is done. All right, looks like we're all done now. Um, let's see, we got a couple more partitions here. I think what's happening is it's checking the images. It created the images and then it checked the images and that's what took the extra time. Press enter to continue, we'll do that. And we're going to power off. We're not gonna do more images today. We're gonna to power off and we're gonna check the image that we just created. So let's do that. Now that the computer's powered off, I'm going to unplug the Clonezilla USB to make sure it doesn't boot from the Clonezilla USB anymore. And I'm going to restart the computer. And we will check to see if our image has actually been created and is actually accessible. Now, the image that's created on there is a Clonezilla image. You really can't browse the files in there, and I'm gonna show you a little trick to have files very accessible on your backup drive. So let's get back in here, put in my super secret password for my example name, and let's fire up the Windows Explorer, and we wanted the test PC backup, and sure enough, there is our image and you can see there's all kinds of files in here and stuff. This is all stuff for Clonezilla. Basically, this is the image backup. So if we can't really get access to the files, you can see these, none of these are, you can't explore and like find a, you know, Word document or something like that that you, you lost or, and you want to replace. So what do you do? Well, actually, we got plenty of space on this drive. If you take a look at the properties here, um, it says we used 17.3 gigabytes and we have 666 gigabytes left. I mean, we got loads of space left. So what we can do is we can create a new, I'm holding Control N, which will create a new window here. And let's go to this PC. And if you look at this PC, we got all of these things that we have in our normal folders, and we can just do this. We can just create a new folder, new folder, test, oh, I don't have to use capital letters in, in Windows here, test PC files. We can just do that, and we can copy all of this stuff and paste it over here. And it'll take a while. Now this, this won't take long. I have almost nothing on this test PC. I mean, virtually no documents at all. So this is gonna be really fast, but yours might take a long time to do this. It's almost done. There we go. So we got all our music, our documents, our pictures, and our full image. So what we can do is just keep updating the test PC files, and we can even keep multiple backups of test PC files if we want manually. Um, and then if we ever have a catastrophic failure, we can restart, uh, reinstall the image to a, another drive, and then take our files and, and recopy the files to make sure the newer files are in there. Uh, from the last image. You could back up these every day. There are programs that will automatically back up files for you and keep versions and stuff like that. And so you could also use this drive for that. But anyway, that, oh, by the way, I, I make I make sure of this. When you take your image and clone it back onto a drive, it has to be the same type of drive if you're gonna use Clonezilla to do it. That is a limitation of Clonezilla. Um, it really doesn't work well. There are workarounds if you get really technical and devious and all that stuff. But if you really want to go from a hard drive to an SSD or an SSD to a, a, a hard disk, you're going to need really to use a better, a different program for doing this. Clonezilla images, they can go back onto the same drive you copied from, or in this case, another SSD because it was copied from an SSD. But Windows doesn't like it when you go from an SSD to a drive and a drive to an SSD. 
unless you do some special things. And Clonezilla software is not set up to do those special things as well. And so I don't recommend, if you need to restore this image, restore it to the same type of drive that it came from. I hope you enjoyed this home tech adventure. Please tell us your stories in the comments on, on how you use Clonezilla to back up or to create an image. See if you were successful. And remember to always have fun on your own home tech adventure.